pop a bottle. What up, y'all? This is Joseph, aka DJ Spin So Nice, and welcome to Record School. This is the Certified Lover Boy Weekend Edition. This is the end of the summer. Um, big up, everybody. I just want to weigh in on my comments about Certified Lover Boy by Drake, the new album. I'm really enjoying it. I'm not going to do a review. But what I am going to do is break it down based on what I think is important uh, from a, you know, from a, someone that listens closely. I'm a listener. I listen closely. And um, yeah, let's get into it. A couple things. I'm outside and figure out enjoy the weather. And uh, the light is kind of hit me kind of weird. So pardon me. Should I go in the light? Let me try this. Let me shift. Let me shift it. Okay, that's a bit better. I feel like I should be wearing some fly gear, you know, because uh, he's kind of a fly guy. Not kind of a fly guy. A real fly guy. I don't have a lot of fly gear because I spend all my money on records. <laughs> I don't know. So if just to keep it certified lover boy ish, I do have a pair of vintage glasses that look pretty dope. So maybe I'll try and put these on just so I can get into the spirit of the celebration of certified lover boy. Should I keep them on? Or off? Ah, let's keep them on. Pop a bottle. All right, let's get to it. Certified lover boy. What I think is important about the album. Um, from a curricular standpoint, le me breaking into analysis, I think the important thing to, to recognize is the amount of music Drake has produced. And this being the most recent project or album in his catalog is very impressive. It's dope. It's amazing. And I think people need to recognize before you are, are you know, aside from listening to the songs and the ones that you like and blah, 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 comparing it to Kanye and all the other stuff, I think people need to recognize that Drake has achieved something really incredible by the amount of music he's put out. Just in 2020, he's put out Tootsie Slide, which is fine, you know, then the Scary Hours EP, and then the mixtape, Dark Lane demo tapes, which had some classics on there, like When to Say When. Uh, also, the track Laugh Now, Cry Later. That's just in 2020, right? And then we have Scorpion, he had a double album. So Drake has been consistent in putting out music for us, for the people, with at pretty much the same level. I don't think he's ever dipped really at all. So I think that's very important. When this is all said and done, it's important to think about and just honor the catalog and the amount of music you know, authentically that he's put out. Now within that body of music, I'm gonna focus on um, Certified Lover Boy, but I just think it's important to honor and recognize the amount of music he's put out throughout his career. Certified Lover Boy, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is important connections that I think people should be thinking about. Four songs and important connections to make about this album, okay? First song is the intro. Uh, Champagne Poetry. That song is very dope in my opinion. I like uh, the sample that uh, the producers hooked up for Drake. The producers in that song are important. Oliver al Khadib, and I uh, hope I'm not mispronouncing his name, Oliver, and Manish. Manish is a producer from Toronto that I went to school with uh, who is an amazing DJ and just a, um, an example of how talented Toronto people are. Woo. We have so much talent in this city, so that's why it's so dope. But if you look at the credits, Manish is one of the producers on a lot of Drake's most recent albums. He's the producer, one of the producers on, Cham on Champagne Poetry. Now, that song is dope because it's one of those intros that Drake is famous for putting out. Uh, also, that, that kind of is in the same tradition as the intro on nothing was the same which is one of my favorite albums where it just got tuscan leather right tuscan leather was the first time we saw drake do a long intro with a sample that's flipped a bunch of different ways i think that one was produced by 40 and it's really impressive it really sucks us into the album he's like how much time am i spending on the intro then we have another intro that's kind of epic as well which was on views if you remember called keep the family close that one, Keep the Family Close, is produced by Manish. So Manish was able, I guess, to kind of pass him the torch of doing these kind of epic sample-based uh, intros where it, they're long and they're, they're a little bit over the top, right? Keep the Family Close, in my opinion, is kind of over the top, but it's definitely epic and it brings us in. It's almost cinematic, and Manish produced that one. So shout out to Manish. He, he plays that role again on champagne poetry with a, a very long epic intro where the sample flips a few different times and drake, drake is able to open us up 
uh, into his music. And I think that's an important connection that I find, you know, I find a pretty dope thing to experience. Because for me, I like to experience the album. Who's who's producing what, what, what's happening with the samples, where is Drake going, how is Drake reacting to the music. So shout out to Manish. That's an interesting connection in terms of the, the intro and, and who, who the producers are that are carrying on that tradition. And this is one of the things Drake offers in his albums. Now, another thing that's dope is the, uh, the gospel sample that's used, right? I would say another connection that's important is the use of gospel samples. The, um, so the use of gospel samples. Um, in Champagne Poetry, we, feel, we hear some gospel samples and then Drake has been dope with gospel samples, right? So there's also, it kind of makes me think back to Lord Knows uh, on Take Care with Just Blaze, produced by Just Blaze and um, featuring Rick Ross, where Just Blaze takes that amazing choir and, and Drake and Just Blaze, Drake and Rick Ross, they go off on it. The, the bars are insane on that song. Well, we have gospel samples on Champagne Poetry, but we also have gospel samples on You Only Live Twice. And I think that's a great connection that runs through Drake's catalog, starting with Take Care, uh, and then Lord knows, uh, and then you only live twice. And then, so the, you only live twice is produced by Bink. Bink also produced uh, some amazing tracks for Rockefeller, as well as for Kanye West. Most importantly, Devil in a New Dress from Dark Twisted Fantasy. That's probably my favorite song on, on, on Dark Twisted Fantasy. Also featuring Rick Ross. So Rick Ross, has an interesting connection, an interesting ability to show up on these big gospel soul um, songs. These songs that have gospel and soul samples by both by both Drake and Kanye West. And Rick Ross is kind of one of the one of the the the, the links in that musical connection in terms of some of the best uses of gospel samples uh, by Drake. And so I think that's pretty important to uh to think about and it's something that that i enjoy because those are some of the best songs some of my favorite songs if you are someone that says to yourself and also jake one jake one also hooked up some gospel samples for drake uh la, 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 on um on nothing was the same but i'm kind of forgetting which track it was um but i'll get to it i'll put it right here if you're saying to yourself okay i i like that stuff i like that sound what gospel should i listen to i don't even go to church here, I got some gospel songs for you. This is a really cool compilation that I, you know, have in the collection. It's called Turn It Loose, Ain't No Good, Savoy Gospel, 1970-1979. Hello. I think you can check this on Spotify, whatever. It's on Savoy Records. This is a dope uh, classic gospel label. And just for some gospel trivia, anything by Reverend James Cleveland and the Southern, Southern California Community Choir. That's, that's a good place to start in terms of soulful gospel that might be might be sampled by Drake. Uh, Reverend James Cleveland and the Southern Gospel, the Southern California Community Choir also accompanied Aretha Franklin for her Amazing Grace album and live album and live DVD, which is on Netflix that you can watch. Here's the cover of it right here. And um, that's kind of some, some dope, <coughs> some dope gospel trivia for you to check out. Uh, and I think that's a really cool connection with the, with the album. Drake's AM PM songs, his AM PM songs. What a dope, uh, uh, theme. What a dope feature to have throughout your catalog, right? Rick Ross is another one. He has his Maybach music series. Drake has his AM PM song series in his catalogs. But the thing is they're not on every album. So if you take a look at, um, if you take a look at Nothing Was The Same, there's no AM, PM song on there, such as, you know, 5 AM in Calabasas or, you know, 2 AM in Dallas. Uh, we have Views here. I don't think there's an AM, PM song on Views, but there's definitely an AM, PM song on, on Certified Lover Boy, which is uh, 7 AM in The Bridal Path. Whew, that's one of my favorite songs because I really love um, how he opens himself up and he, he, he gives us some crazy bars on that track. I've never heard anyone rhyme Antetokounmpo in a song where he's talking about keeping a buck like Antetokounmpo. That one made me say, damn, okay. And then I like how he also says, um, 
uh, but let me put it on, the, let me digress on behalf of the association. <laughs> I'll play it cool with you. And then Marka, like Denmark, like Copenhagen. I just, I, I butchered that bar, I'm sorry. I just, I figured I'd give it a try and I just butchered it. Long story short, uh, this AMPM I think is dope because he addresses his thoughts on the Kanye situation. And it's my second favorite AMPM song. My, my, my favorite AMPM song is on Care Package and it's 5 a.m. No, sorry, it is 5 a.m. in Toronto. If you get this Care Package bootleg, 5 a.m. in Toronto is my favorite Drake AM PM track. I just love the beat, how it bangs, and how he just raps so aggressive on that joint. Whew, that one's dope. And so those are my favorite connections uh, that I found the most interesting of this album. Uh, one other thing I'll say, I think Drake has also given us the most amazing autobi autobiographical relationship songs of any artist, maybe other than Prince. All his relationship songs, they seem to be you know, about something going wrong or some girl that has done something wrong or he, you know, he has done something, you know, wrong or, 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 or something's gone wrong. There's some struggle involved. And there's a new a musician that has participated in that tradition over the past couple albums. And I'll say that is Ty Dolla Sign. Ty Dolla Sign is now uh, someone that's, you know, featured in the Drake world. So uh, especially in his relationship songs. So on Scorpion, one of my favorite songs is Jaded, where Drake has a, a heartfelt track about his relationship with Georgia Smith. And he is spilling it. He's saying, yes, I'm hurting. Yes, I'm jaded. And Ty Dolla Sign is featured in the background of that song. And I, I think that song is really deep when I, I've listened to that song a thousand times. Now, on Certified Loverboy, uh, two of my favorite relationship songs are Pipe Down and also, um, what is it, Get Along Better. I get along better with your friends. I think it was called Get Along Better. Uh, and Ty Dolla Sign is on Get Along Better. And that song, I, I think, I just love that song. And I'm like, wow, imagine telling your girl, you know what, <laughs> this ain't about revenge, but I just get along better with your friends. Ooh, that's some, that's some deep waters you're gonna be swimming in. But obviously, musically, Drake makes those songs so dope, so interesting. And uh, yeah, I think that's the last connection that I will mention. So to sum it up, I hope you have appreciated this kind of like, listening guide and my take on Certified Lover Boy and some of these amazing connections that you can kind of get into that link all the albums together throughout the whole catalog. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, check out more content on my channel here. Subscribe and tell me what other connections you might be, what you might find in the Drake catalog or connections that you find in the, um, in the album itself. So I guess you could like and you know, like this video, subscribe to my content. Let me know what other connections that you're interested in or if you found my connections interesting and they help your, your viewing pleasure. I'll see you online and maybe I'll see you at OVO Fest. Holla back, peace.